Before leaving office, President Joe Biden signed a sweeping executive order on cybersecurity and artificial intelligence. Joining me now to talk more about President Biden's order is Lone Star College University Park Advisory Board member Dr. Patrick Dix. Good morning. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Good morning. I appreciate you having me. Yeah. So talk to us about what's behind this executive order to provide more energy at AI data centers. I know this has been a big concern for a lot of folks. So let's start there and and we'll navigate this new this new executive order. Well, one of the things is just like in Virginia, Texas is going to be a big state where they're building these AI mm -hmm. data centers and why they are building them and why he um, signed the executive order is People want the information instantaneously. And also those AI data centers, there are servers in there that have to store the information. And also they're putting them in um, areas to where there are big communities. So for instance, if you're a company and you're located in Atlanta, Georgia, you can have a data center in Georgia, or as I spoke earlier about they're building them in Texas and in Virginia. That way the information is faster, it's more accurate, and you have a place to store. But the content this is these types of data centers produce a lot of power. So the other thing we have to take in perspective is when we build these data centers, how are we going to deal with the, the, the demand mm -hmm. on the power um, grid? Because our three phase system is already inundated with other things. The kilowatts that are going to be produced by the AI data centers, we have to understand how we're going to fix those. And Larry Ellison of Oracle out in California, they've even thought about using nuclear reactors to provide mm. power for these AI data, data wow. centers because the yeah. amount of power that it takes is tremendous. What type of impact or change could this have on the workforce? Could Dr. Dix this create new jobs for, for people? Yes, those AI data centers are going to have a minimum of 100 people that have those specific skill sets. And when I mean specific skill sets, you're talking about your computer engineers, you're talking about hardware engineers, you're talking about your network engineers, you're talking about people that have to put in those network cable network cables. Also, we're talking about blue collar. Those types of data centers require a lot of energy and they require massive air conditioning units. So mm, your HVAC mm -hmm. and your plumbers, the need for them is going to grow also. So in both fields, blue collar and white collar, yeah. there are going to be tremendous jobs created to not only build these centers, but to maintain them. A lot of opportunities and that perhaps is good news when it comes to AI. Yeah. As we know, AI is constantly evolving, it's changing. What type of ways or other impacts do you foresee we will see come 2025 later throughout the year? The main impacts we are going to see, the key one is businesses used to hide they were using artificial intelligence mm. and automation. Now they're letting you know we are using artificial intelligence to stay competitive. You are going to see more companies investing billions of dollars to try to get the competitive edge to try to automate processes and to make um, other things strategic so they can stay in the job market and eventually get rid of human labor so they can mm -hmm. increase their profits. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Dix, a lot of this conversation is focused on opportunities growth, right? Uh, we do know though there are a lot of folks concerned on how this mm -hmm. might impact impact their current role for people who are who are uneasy about what AI means for them and how it could define their workforce. What would you say to them right now? What I would say to them is you have Coursera, you have Google, and you have Microsoft that offer AI classes. It's just like math. Everybody wants to learn about artificial intelligence, but the best thing to do is to learn from the foundational level. I will also check out my local uh, college and also check out the college that offers trades. Right now, this is the best time in history. When I say this to people, we are going through the fourth industrial revolution. This is the opportunity of a lifetime for everyone. Everyone could be a part of this if you're in stem if you're in blue collar so if you're working you feel you're going to be impact, impacted by this i recommend you go to Coursera, go to google go to microsoft and take some of those free courses check out your local community colleges for some of those additional courses to learn about ai and also check out the growing free, growing field of trades okay dr dix we so much appreciate your time this morning thank you so much for the conversation thank you